What is going on everybody on YouTube? Max Rock here with a brand new video. And today we're gonna to be doing a full review of the ZTE Max XL. As you can see, this is a Virgin Mobile model. Had this phone for about three weeks now, probably going on a month. And I got a lot more positive than negative to say about it. Um, it was pretty inexpensive for a device of uh, these specs and I would say quality um, pretty much similar to what they did last year with Z Max Pro that came out of Metro PCS a device that had a 6 inch full HD screen and it was it had a fingerprint scanner it was decent build quality and it was all for 100 bucks and if you got a port in with Metro last year you were able to get it for 60 bucks off and so you get the phone for uh, 30 oh, excuse me 40 bucks now I may be wrong but I do remember it was at least 60 to 50 to 60 bucks that I got off because I ended up paying for the unlimited plan for that month and I I've, I've walked out paying for the plan in the phone at about a hundred bucks so just keep that in mind all right but this phone was only a $99 same price as the Z Max Pro from last year uh, it was on sale because the regular price is 129 but got it at Best Buy on sale, picked it up, enjoyed it. I was looking for a six inch phone from a jump, but hey, this one turned out to be a little bit more than what I expected. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into the specs. So for this device here, uh, we have a six inch, like the Z Max Pro, full HD uh, panel here. It's 1080 by 1920 pixels. On the back, you got a 13 megapixel camera, capable of shooting 1080p video, 720p, all that you got an LED flash I believe it's dual tone or excuse me it's not dual tone it looked like that for a second <laughs> and then you got a fingerprint scanner in the back with ZTE branding um, you also have or as far as uh, internals here uh, with the CPU and everything you got a, a Snapdragon 435 that's a clocked at 1.4 gigahertz it is an octa-core um, and the battery size which is probably one of the better things about this phone is that it has a 3,990 milliamp hour uh, battery and I have to say that it performs pretty well um, since I'm getting into the battery here I can actually show you some screenshots of uh, the kind of battery life that I've gotten from this phone here because obviously a phone with a six inch screen and a you know battery of that size you would expect it to do well but not as well as I thought um, so for example I mean, how that didn't make any sense. You expected it to do well, but being that it had a six inch screen, you probably wouldn't expect too much from it. So this here, to just give you an example of what kind of battery life you can expect from this device. And this will depend entirely on your usage, okay? Um, oh yeah, and I know I had the phone out of the shot. I was talking over here. So basically, as you can see, I got seven hours of battery, well, seven hours of battery. Seven hours of on-screen time and I had 27% battery left, okay? I even had some instances where, I'll show you this one here, it's not better, but it's a six hours and 36 minutes with 34% left. And then I even have another one where it was about six hours, I believe, and, uh, no, no, no. It was three hours, 47 minutes with 49% left. So pretty consistent numbers, because if you average that out, another 49%, 50% is close, so that's close to about another seven hours. Yeah, like I got before. And that does entirely depends on your usage there, okay? So let's get back into the specs. <laughs> so this device, like I said, has a six inch 1080p screen. It does have uh, Gorilla Glass. They weren't specific in which version Gorilla Glass it has, but it does have it. It's kind of weird to say that, you know, the screen itself is Gorilla Glass, but they don't give you a specific number, or like which one, like which version is it? It's kind of weird. But the OS that it has is Android 7.1.1, it's Nougat. Um, like I said, you got the Qualcomm Snapdragon 435, it's the Octa-Core one. Now the Adreno is the 505, that's the one that they have running uh, in this device here. And like I said, you get uh, 16 gigabytes of storage and you get two gigs of RAM. Now with the Sprint model, which is technically, you know, I guess considered different is postpaid obviously um, it has 32 gigs of storage with two gigs of RAM which is interesting and uh, let's see here 
The front facing camera is a five megapixel, capable of shooting 1080p as well. Um, it has active noise cancellation with a dedicated mic. So it does have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Let me go ahead and pick this up and show you that. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack there with a microphone on top. And on the bottom, you got a USB type C port with a microphone for uh, talking, I believe. And this is clearly the ear speaker so that you can hear your parties when you're talking to them. And on the front, you got a home button. You got a, you actually have a set of on-screen buttons. You have dedicated home buttons back in multitasking, which you can switch around and have the back uh, over here and multitasking over here. Well, I don't prefer that, so I don't do it. And on the side here, you got the power button, which is rigid. You can tell it is rigid there. And then you have the volume up and down keys. And on the left side of the device, you just simply have this SIM tray slot. All right. So, uh, and by the way, the Sprint model has a battery that's 3,400 milliamps. So it's not as big, which is interesting. Um, I think what they did was swap it for a smaller battery and, and uh, added more internal space. I don't know why they did that, but that's pretty much what happened. So we're six minutes into the video here and I haven't even talked about uh, my personal experiences with it as much. So enough about the specs. This device here performs pretty good when it performs good, if that makes sense. Yeah, pretty good when it performs good, but it can get a little laggy. Um, now, of course, you can't expect too much from a device in this price range. Um, it's not that it's a terrible device. It, it does perform pretty well. Um, the panel on it looks really good as well, 1080p. It can be a little hard to see out, outside because the glare from the sun does uh, pretty much make this screen almost non-existent, even when it's on full, on full brightness. And this is just my personal experience here. Now, one thing that I can talk about immediately is that YouTube on this device, it's good when it's good. Okay, and I say that again because you could be watching a video on YouTube and be in the middle of it and the screen would just go black out and it will load up again the video but then it will do it a second time and this time the video won't be playing so you will only hear audio so that's pretty much you know that sucks if you ask me um, no one wants to go through that when you're using a device um, you shouldn't have to go through that when you're using a device but as far as call quality because I did activate this phone on the virtual mobile network um, you know, Claude Holly was smooth. Um, I actually went to Atlanta uh, about a week ago, and coverage downtown Atlanta was beautiful. Um, I think I seen the signal bar up there maybe go down a little bit, but most of the time it was pretty much full. And I was able to get about 50 down some tests. Matter of fact, let me see if I can uh, pull up some of those tests so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. Because, uh, you know, on this prepaid, it is Virgin Mobile. Uh, when you're in a good coverage zone, uh, you can get some pretty good speeds. So let me go ahead and see if I can find uh, some test results that were in Atlanta. Uh, so what we got here, July 12th, 7th. Um, that was about the 22nd. And where was I, Atlanta, Georgia? Okay, so right here. Atlanta, Georgia. It shows that I got 47.13 down. That was the LTE speeds and about 16.16 uh, .16 megabytes up. And it says Atlanta, Georgia. I was clearly on the uh, a tower there for Sprint. And so, I mean, data speeds can be pretty good depending on where you are. Now, as far as the cameras on this device, got a camera video separate uh, from this one here that's dedicated entirely to this device here. Um, showing you the quality of the video, the quality of the picture that it takes, because it does have HDR. Matter of fact, we can fire up the camera app and uh, look at the uh, layout here. So let me go ahead and flip this around. So as you can see, uh, this is the camera layout. You got the settings here on the bottom, which is pretty much self-explanatory. Got the flash indicator, which you want to do auto or keep it on or keep it off. I got mine's off right now. HDR mode, you got the timer, and then you got the, 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 the button up here to actually flip the camera around to the front facing one. You get a manual mode for this camera, so if you are a person who loves the manual mode, this is definitely for you because you get the option for manual. And then also, oops, hit the back button. 
uh, you get a little bit of a uh, little bit of uh, modes here. A few of them. You get time lapse. You get multi exposure and Panamera. And then the video mode here. Obviously, you just swipe up and then you get the video mode. Now um, you got some filters that you can use. Uh, you know the ones that they always have mono, pretty much standard. And then a front facing camera is pretty much the same thing. Just the camera is now facing you. And the camera in the front, like I said, is five megapixels. It can shoot 1080p video. You can see me over here, sort of, kind of. Do 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 do. What up? What up? What up? Wait, you can't really see me. All right, well, <laughs> screw it. So, camera performance is decent and good lighting. Um, when there is no lighting, um, don't be surprised. It's not the best. Uh, Geekbench score, we got that on deck as well. Uh, Geekbench recently did an update. Uh, I'm not gonna say it was an update specifically for you know devices running 7.1.1, but we can give you an average um, of what we got here. So when I first got the device, shows you there July 4th, we had a Geekbench score of 678 uh, and a multi-core score for a single core, and then a multi-core score of 2599. And then of the tests, got 689, then a multi-core score of 2549. And so as far as being in the sixes and staying in the 2500s. Um, it is pretty consistent uh, when it comes to multi-core performance this device is not a slouch but when it comes to single core it's not as good as some other ones but then you got to keep in mind that it is running the snapdragon 435 okay and so um, as far as the the OS here and how it runs 7.1.1 it is a pretty uh, it is a pretty much a you know a late version of Android here uh, I want to say the latest public release version, but it may be, I think there's a 7.1.2 out there. I may be wrong. Um, and it might just be a, uh, a ROM, actually. But, um, yeah, as far as the speaker in the back, it's not the loudest. It's, it really isn't. Like, when it comes to uh, watching media on this device here, when you actually get a YouTube video to work, when it comes to watching media on this device, uh, without headphones, the speaker is kind of hard to hear. Um, and you could easily cover it. Um, it's a big phone, so your hands are going to be pretty much at the ends most of the time when you're watching it in landscape mode. So you're probably going to end up covering that speaker. So the speaker in the back is not the best. The actual quality of the uh, device here as far as the build quality, it is primarily, matter of fact, it's constructed of plastic here. This is a nice grippy texture in the back, so it will be kind of hard to drop it as far as uh, grip is concerned. But overall, it does look pretty good. Um, it is one of those devices where if you pull it out, somebody's going to notice the size of it immediately, obviously. And they're probably going to wonder who is ZTE because ZTE is not that popular of a brand when it comes to the U.S. here. It's pretty popular, but it's not like a Samsung or an LG where someone instantly knows the logo. Um, don't get me wrong, though. ZTE does have a lot of phones out there in the U.S., especially on the carriers. Um, as far as the uh, charging time, this does have quick charge. I want to say 2.0. It could be 1.0, but the, the fact of the matter is that it does have quick charge, so it can charge pretty quickly. Um, so that's not a problem at all with this device. Um, when it comes to uh, overall performance of the OS, like this, the, the, uh, the software, the software, the software, and the optimization of it, eh, you know, with 7.1.1, it does run pretty smooth. The uh, OS is pretty good. I don't have a launcher running on here. This is a stock one, and I don't use the Messenger app that it comes with. I think it does have a separate messenger app, has a separate email app. It has a, uh, oh no, it doesn't have a separate messenger app, but it does have a separate email app. It has a lot of apps that were on the device before, you know, any type of installation went on with me as a user. Um, but overall, this device is actually really good in my opinion, especially for the price. If you're looking for a device that has a really good looking screen, cameras that can perform decently well with a big battery that can last all day, um, as long as you don't mind YouTube, uh, you know, stopping and loading consistently until it actually turns black, you'll be perfectly fine with this phone here. This video is already pushing 15 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and end it right there. So, of course, if you guys have any other questions about this device, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to do another video on it. I decided I'm probably going to end up keeping it. I'm not going to end up selling it because, you know, usually I take a device back. If I'm not really feeling it, but this device is a CTE device. I'm going to try to keep this one here because it is a six inch screen. The battery is humongous and it does last a long time on charge. So why not use it for a media device? And then hopefully in the future, the YouTube situation does get fixed 
And this is an issue that's been occurring across all the devices as far as Boost Mobile, the uh, the Boost Mobile One, obviously the original Mobile One. I'm pretty sure the Sprint One has the same issue. So I think an update could be pushed out where this issue doesn't uh, take place anymore. And of course, like I was saying, uh, leave a comment if you want to see this device um, specifically go into detail on any specific, uh, specific feature or should I say uh, any particular feature that you want to see a uh, video dedicated to, go ahead and let me know in the comments. But until then, I want to say, of course, thank you guys for watching this video. My name is Max Rock, and you have a good day. Oh, don't forget, I forgot this. Deuces. Deuces.